Okay, peoples, we're inside right now in this pre-apocalyptic world. We're making fig jam, and uh, I wanted to document this process just simply because actually I've never, I don't think I've made jam for you guys before. And um, I want to note a couple things here about the product that I have. You can sort of, there's some strawberries there, but you can kind of tell with the figs themselves is that, and you can really smell it, is that we don't really have the best product to start with in that a lot of these figs were picked under ripe and or figs that I didn't really want to eat. Um, just otherwise they would have went to waste and I ended up freezing them. So they're really not of the best quality. Some of these you could argue, well that one looks pretty good. But if you want a great jam here guys, especially a fig jam, really well any, any jam, I don't care what fruit it is, you have to start out with a great fruit to start. And you can add all the sugar you want in the world, but if you have, again, the right fruit that's ripened to perfection and you turn that into jam, you're gonna have the best quality jam. I don't care where you're growing them, who has the figs, who's making the jam, what recipe it is, it all starts with the fruit. And um, I don't have that. I don't have the best quality fruits, but uh, we're making do with what I got because I don't want this to go to waste and I never ended up using them from last season. And um, now that we're running out of some freezer space, I wanna, we're gonna probably get some meat, store some meat in the freezer. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm cooking this down. And you can also do other fruits as well. You know, we had a couple strawberries as I mentioned, we had a plum in here. Just throw it in, it's all gonna break down, it's all gonna turn into jam. Um, it won't be pure. But uh, it is what it is, and this should be, it should be pretty good, considering, um, even though I'm being sort of negative. That's really the, uh, the honest truth here about the jam. So one other thing I think is worth mentioning is that you could, if you wanted, is get all these seeds out of here uh, after this is all done. Um, I'm not really sure how you would do this beforehand or what really the best method is, but you can see there's a ton of seeds just at the top here. This isn't foam. These are just all seeds. I like the seeds. It adds good character, I think, to the jam. Some of you may not, and that's your prerogative and that's your thing. Um, and you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, other than that, I think this will probably take me, I don't know, maybe this amount of it, maybe it will take me 30 minutes. Um, and it's really just as simple as getting it here on the stove top in a pan. We've got the, oh, excuse the uh, bump there. We have the stove on, on high pretty much, um, almost the highest it can go. In fact, I'm gonna put it on high. And then you just let this kind of simmer for quite some time. The air or the um, a lot of the water eventually comes out of this and we get the consistency that we want. It gets cooked down just like tomatoes. If you guys are making paste or any other fruit that you do it like this, um, it's kind of what it does. You just have to be patient and wait for this to break down to the consistency that you want. We test it with some sugar, you know, um, add as much sugar as you think it might need. Uh, but do it on the conservative side and then taste it and see if it needs to be sweeter and you can add more sugar and Then that's that's all I have to say really. I just wanted to cover this and uh, I think the main message is that if you start out with the best fruit You're gonna have the best jam and uh, It's really that simple. So stay safe out there. We'll talk to everybody soon Take care guys